On the days before um, I was tested positive for coronavirus, I was actually traveling, uh, both for work and for um, my birthday. So, yes, I did travel before I was infected with coronavirus. Um, the thing is, I, I just travel constantly, to be honest, for my work. But um, I was traveling during the period uh, that I believe I caught my infection. I might actually have caught it in Kuwait um, prior to traveling. That is, a, There is a small probability of that, but it's still uncertain. To be honest, I have no idea when I was infected. Um, yes, I was taking every single precaution uh, to avoid getting coronavirus. I'm very aware. I'm a bit of a germaphobe. I uh, was wearing gloves uh, on every single flight. I was sanitizing my hands constantly. I was washing my hands constantly. I was wearing a mask constantly and in some occasions goggles as well. My symptoms are exceedingly mild. Um, actually, actually, one of my big problems right now is a lot of doctors are refusing tests for people who have other symptoms but don't have a fever. And I don't know if we are an errant sample or what, but in my ward right here, out of 25 positive cases, 24 have had no record whatsoever of fever, and we're all in recovery, so we're not expected to develop fevers. So I don't understand why fever has surfaced as the primary um, symptom of coronavirus. Um, yeah, so basically, I did show uh, I did show symptoms, um, but it was a very just very mild dry cough, um, completely absent in the daytime that would surface uh, sometimes in the night, just up to five coughs, really nothing. And I had uh, one and a half days of severe um, tiredness in my muscles, like just feeling my muscles were really heavy and leaden and uh, a severe headache. But that lasted for a very short period of time. I could easily have just dismissed it as fatigue. The testing process was actually quite efficient. Uh, when I arrived in Kuwait Airport after my flight, uh, they shuttled us to this line um, for the airport clinic where we, we were provided with two papers, a health monitoring paper, where uh, the government monitors people under home quarantine, and another paper to get a swab at Jabal Hospital where I'm currently being treated. Um, and I, I went there, did the swab, uh, and in less than 24 hours, um, uh, two doctors showed up at my house, uh, told me I confirmed uh, positive, asked me a lot of other questions about my whereabouts and who I ca came into contact with, and then uh, brought me here uh, to Java Hospital. The hospital room is actually amazing. If I can just show you, it's quite large. Uh, we have really big windows, the beds are really comfortable. Uh, compared to what I had expected to find here, I was so pleasantly surprised uh, and actually like by the level of um, comfort that we are in right now. I mean, I know a lot of countries just are totally overloaded, hospitals are completely overloaded and you have tons of beds right next to each other, people getting treated in, in really quite depressing conditions. Like, we're really, really fortunate here in Kuwait that uh, our hospitals can still keep up with the demand. I have no more body pain, I have no, no more tiredness, and I have no more headache, so... I'm pretty great, to be honest. Like, I, I barely have anything. I barely have any symptoms at all. Essentially, my work has, an impact, has been impacted more less by my diagnosis than just by uh, the global quarantine. So a lot of my work is in Italy and obviously all the factories are shut down um, and all work has been interrupted. I'm in touch with friends and family every single day uh, via FaceTime and social media. They think my viral success in becoming the face of coronavirus uh, in the Gulf uh, is hilarious. I think it is too.